actually decided it was a good idea to call me back uh, to record a, a second record for them. Idiots. What the hell are you thinking? In the end, we just thought, he's done such a good job on the last CD. He's so easy to work with. He's got such good ideas. I blew it the first time. I blow it again, <laughs> fools. We just wanted to make sure everything was spot on. So we concentrated on having big sing-alongs, massive breakdowns. I wanted it to be a little more technical. I wanted to challenge myself a little more. We put a lot more conscious effort into the way songs were structured. Just truck through, had more time. We got to uh, cover uh, a lot more things, make sure things got a little tighter. When Horizons dropped, it blew away any expectations I could have had. Killing with a Smile kind of laid the foundation and then they came in with Horizons and it just blew things completely over the top. They're in a position where they could have easily slowed things down or popped things up, but, you know, it, it's a heavier release. To me, Horizons is a step up. All their stuff is great, but I think on Horizons, they're taking their craft and they're honing it and they're bringing it even more. Horizons became one of the biggest CDs as far as heavy music goes ever in Australia. To kind of burst into the mainstream chart, it came in at number six, which is Phenomenal. I mean, that's up there with you know, like your Britney Spears and, and shit like this. It's all of a sudden, you know, The Age and The Herald Sun and, and mainstream newspapers are like, who the fuck is Parkway Drive? Where did that come from? They're totally extreme and confronting and yet wildly popular. The response to Horizons far exceeded any expectations any of us had. The difference in the amount of kids turning out to shows when Horizons came out was staggering. Parkway Drive is the only band that I know of that put up a career in Europe within two years where they jumped from 150 average to over 1,000. Pretty impressing. I don't know any other bands who can pull that off. I just want to say something before we get going. We actually played in this venue about two years ago, and I think there was about maybe 15 people watching us. their shows to people that don't speak the same language as you and yet they're absolutely destroying venues. They're singing along in these weird accents, screaming these lyrics that I'd written in my little room back in Australia. Turnouts became bigger, the band became bigger, and transportation became bigger. They started going out in buses. That's good. Shows in Europe had got to the point where it was almost as good as playing at home.
were sort of often read about how pop band is sort of doing so well in Australia, but yet they go overseas and they make a big deal of doing one show in LA or doing one show in London. And, you know, I've got a band that are doing 2,000 people in London. Why does no one pay any attention to that? This band just fucking toured the last four or five years hard, just kept going back and back, and that's how you do it. Like, you just got to keep playing shows, get your name out there, tour, and they've done it. You know, they didn't need to be played on commercial radio, they didn't need MTV to be playing them. They did it on their own, they did it through absolute hard work. Fuck, that's as good as it gets because you can sit back at the end of the day, realise where you got to is because of yourself and no one else is to fucking, like, take the credit away from the band. We never expected any of this, we never asked for any of this. And yet, we find ourselves in a position where We've seen so much more of this planet than most other people in the world. Well, I've always wanted to travel and been able to do it with this band. It's just a dream come true. Friend of Brad? Brad's friend. We're in Budapest. Yeah. I get to hang with, you know, some of my best mates and get paid for it at the same time. For me, that's basically as good as it gets. They come to Europe, actually want to see things, want to learn something about the culture, want to, want to travel, want to go to crazy places. It's almost like, uh, you know, the band is almost a vehicle for them to see the rest of the world. Oh, you're a fucking legend. <laughs> 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 One day you'll be like, you know, castle in the snow and then the next night you'll be sleeping in a shipwreck on the beach. Fellas, it's the pinnacle of touring thus far. It just gives you the opportunity, apart from playing to thousands of kids all over the world and then being stoked on your music, to be able to tour the world and experience it and see all this crazy shit you might not have even seen.